Hello my fiery friends, the Inferno Man here with our budget deck tech for you today. And for today's budget deck tech, we'll be covering a mono green wolf stompy deck. How budget are we talking? The deck will only cost you 9 rares and 1 mythic on magic arena. For those of you who are new to the channel, here's basically how we're going to break it down for you. First we'll cover the creatures in the deck to explain how the deck is meant to synergize with them, we'll cover the non-creature spells, we'll then cover the land base, we'll then go over the sideboard, and of course we'll have a couple matches against Sparky to show you how the deck is meant to be played. If you do like this kind of content, if you are a fan of budget deck techs in general, please make sure to give a like on the video and subscribe to the channel to see all the deck techs, booster pack openings I do, and so much more. But enough of me rambling, let's go ahead and dive right in. Now to begin, we'll be covering our 23 creatures in the main deck, starting with Snarling Wolf and Tenacious Pup. Snarling Wolf's pretty simple, it just has an ability that makes it a 3-3 as long as you pump it up, but it can only do it once a turn. Not really a big deal, but it helps us get in that early game damage. Tenacious Pup is going to be a cute little card that helps us pump up our next creature that we cast. As you can see from what it says, when you cast your next creature spell, that creature enters the battlefield with not only a plus one plus one counter, but also a trample and vigilance counter. Pretty sweet. Pack Song Pup is in the two drop slot, and it kind of will pump itself up so long as we can hold on to another wolf or werewolf on the battlefield. And if it dies, we can gain some life back. Werewolf Pack Leader, one of our rares, and we have to have a full playset of it, is a pretty awesome two drop creature. You usually may not have to do its secondary ability to make it a 5 3 with trample. However, it really just depends on your scenario. Mostly you're going to hope that you can pump up your other creatures first and then swing with a Werewolf Pack Leader so you can save your mana for something else. Ferocious Pup is mostly a bit of a filler card, but however, if we can just get some plus one plus one counters on it with some other abilities that we have, it's actually a pretty cute little card that it's a two for one deal. Primal Adversary is our one mythic that we will be utilizing as a four three with Trample. When it enters the battlefield, you can pay two mana any number of times. When you pay this cost once or more, you can put that many plus one plus one counters on the adversary. Then up to that many target lands you control become wolf creatures with haste that are still lands. This is actually a pretty sweet finisher in the late game. So we only, however, need one because its ability to pay gets a little pricey. We're not actually running that many lands and we don't have any ramp in the deck. So this is why we only just need one copy of it. Your other finisher is your Night Pack Ambusher. It's a really sweet card. It has flash and it not only pumps our wolves, but also our werewolves. So everything synergizes greatly with this. At the beginning of your end step, if you didn't cast a spell this turn, you, were, you can create a 2-2 green wolf creature token. So this will help us go wide along with the primal adversary. And as you can see, most of our wolves are mostly focused on trying to either go big or wide. So just keep this in mind as you are casting. The biggest thing I would caution you on is when you do play your wolves, you don't have to run out your whole board. Assume that if your opponent has any kind of removal, you might have to kind of readjust your game plan. On the other hand, if they're only doing spot removal, maybe you might want to flood the board. It really just depends on how your opponent is playing against you. For the non-creature spells in the deck, we'll be utilizing 15 total, beginning with Blizzard Brawl. You choose a target creature you control and a target creature you don't control. They basically fight. However, to maximize the most out of this card, make sure you have your three snow permanents out. And again, you can then get your indestructibility and plus one attack power on the creature that you are controlling. Snakeskin Veil will be your protection against spot removal. Gain hexproof on a creature and you give it a plus one plus one counter. Zephyr Boots, now I know it looks a little strange in the deck, but hear me out. If you haven't already noticed, wolves don't actually fly. We really don't have a way of dealing with flying creatures in a natural way. Also, the card draw and discard is eh, not too bad. It's a nice bonus. Ranger Class is our very powerful and last set of rares that we are utilizing in the deck. As you've seen already, at level 1, we get to create a wolf. At level 2, our attacking creature, just one, gets a plus one plus one counter on it. And at level three, we can then start casting creature spells with the top of our library. There are going to be some times where we will get blown out by either spot removal or wraths. So ranger class helps us rebuild if we can just make it up to level three. And the other major weakness to our deck, if you haven't seen, most of our wolves don't have a way of getting through damage against chump blockers. So two copies of Garrick's Uprising helps us ensure that our creatures will have trample. And then if we need to, we may be able to take advantage of that secondary ability by being able to draw cards from a creature with power four or greater. Usually that should be your night pack ambusher that gets you that extra card draw. But otherwise, that's basically going to be it for the non-creature spells. For your land base, this is as simple as possible. Obviously, we're a budget deck. We're in a mono color. We don't have to do anything fancy fancy. 19 snow covered forest. That's all you need. And three hay shop oasis just helps us as a create a little extra pump when we need it to in a pinch. 
Now for your sideboard, what you want to do is try to do a light touch when it comes to bringing in stuff. Remember, you don't want to overdo it, mostly because the way this deck is designed, you want to make sure that you keep the core of your wolf game plan alive. However, if we do have to deal with certain things, we have our Graveyard Hate with Soul Guide Lantern. Life goes on, a single copy of. You want to maximize that 8 life by having maybe one of your weaker creatures die, and this is helpful against the burn and aggro creatures. Stinging Shot is to help not necessarily destroy some of our flyers, but they can soften them up just to make sure that we can get through. Destiny Spinner is helpful against the control matchups to prevent our spells from getting countered. A single copy of Outland Liberator to destroy artifacts or enchantments in a pinch, but if we can flip it, it does a lot more. Kenris Transformation to help us ensure that we can get any one of our troublesome creatures that we just can't fight whittled down to just a 3-3 Elk. Two copies of Ram Through just to do a little extra damage and overlaps with our Blizzard Brawl. It's at instant speed, so it's actually a little bit better, but it is more expensive because it's a two drop. Blanchwood Armor just helps one of our creatures go huge with a plus one, plus one for each force we control. Two copies of Return to Nature to get rid of artifacts and enchantments at instant speed, and also helps exile a card from the graveyard in a pinch if we really, really need to, and we don't have that Soul Guide Lantern. And finally, a single copy of Blinding Fog as our budget option to protect our creatures from any kinds of mass damage or gives our creatures hexproof. But otherwise, that is basically it for the sideboard. Let's go ahead and let's have a couple matches against Sparky to show you how the deck is meant to be played. All right, everybody. So here we go. We're going to be playing our Green Wolf Stompy deck. So as you can see right here, your game plan is you want to have your one drop, two drop to three drop. And we actually have a fourth drop. The only thing we just need to do is we want to hopefully get our lands in. And this is actually a pretty sweet curve. All right, let's keep this and let's see what we got. All right, so Snow Cover Forest, the Tenacious Pup comes in, and our next creature, which will obviously be Pack Song Pup, will then come in with those extra counters. Pretty nice. Second land, Pack Song Pup comes in, Tenacious Pup pumps it up, pumping the puppers. Go swinging, 19. All right, Sparky, not looking too good right now. <laughs> if we can get down the Night Pack Ambusher and we can go super wide, this actually would be a really nice way to show you how this deck is going to run. Oh, get our Rising, that's actually pretty nice too. So first, let's bring in the Ferocious Pup. We're going to save the Garrick Uprising for the next turn because Paxong Pump pumps itself up to a 4, which will then trigger off Garrick's Uprising in a bit. All right, we'll go swinging. And with that Vigilance, it's really nice. It prevents us from being overrun by anything. Those Tim Street Cadets are a little annoying. Aw, Sparky got rid of one of our wolves. That's okay. All right, Sparky. You going to swing it? Nope. Werewolf Pack Leader is pretty nice too. But first, let's get Garrick Uprising. Everything now has Trample. We get to draw a card. Pack Song Pup gets another. We go swinging again with just the Pup. That's all we need. Okay, they're going to do a mass block here, which is fine. This means we can clear the board. Do a little extra damage. We lose our Pup, but we gain 5 life off of that. So that gives us an extra little bit of buffer versus our opponent. Right, Raid right, Bombardment. Oh, and also the Garrick's Uprising again will work with the Night Pack Ambusher. So, let's see how we want to do this. Well, considering that at this point our opponent doesn't really have that many cards, we can flood the board at this point. So, we're actually going to do that. Wolf. All right. Down to 13. All right. So, we should be able to finish off next turn with the Night Pack Ambusher. So, let's bring that in now. Garrick's Uprising triggers. We draw a card. All right. And then we do a mass swing here. All right. Basically, we're already done at this point, but you guys you guys get the idea. We just went, and we went slightly wide with all of our creatures. The Ambusher was able to help pump up the rest of the creatures in the deck. A Werewolf Pack Leader can come in. Triggers off Garrick's Uprising. Let's get our second Werewolf Pack Leader in. Another trigger to draw a card. Okay. And we got Snow Cover Forest. You want to bring in the other pup. Why not? And there you go, guys. <laughs> That's basically it. Not too bad, huh? Let's get a second game in to show you another way you can win. Okay, so you can see right here we're in our next match against Sparky. And this time, all right, we got actually a little bit of variety. This one, we'll try to see if we can go big. We have our Werewolf Pack Leader, the Ranger class, the Pup to pump it up, the Tenacious Pup, and a Blizzard Brawl to get things cleared out. All right, this is actually pretty nice. All right, Tenacious Pup. All right, our next thing that comes in will get a plus one, plus one counter, which I think we want on the werewolf pack leader. Okay, and we got a snakeskin bill for protection. Great. All right, so I wonder if Sparky might have some kind of removal. They might, but we're going to take a chance. All right, so we get the trigger off. Werewolf pack leader will now come in with, as a 4-4 with Vigilance and Travel, which is really nice. That sounds pretty sweet. So what we can do is, assuming they don't do anything to us next turn, 
Snakeskin Veil can be utilized in the Pump Up Park Tenacious Pup. And then we can then start drawing cards, which actually we really do need right now because we don't hit our lands. Hmm. Okay, so let's do this. Blizzard Brawl. So since we don't have our third snow covered forest, we won't get the benefits of the card. So in this case, we're just gonna have to put it on the back leader. Gets that out of the way. We'll wait another turn. We'll have to be a little greedy here. Down to 14, Sparky. Got any options? Let's see. Nothing? Nothing? Oh, okay. They got a raise dead. I guess they're gonna cast it again right now. Okay. A little annoying, but not too bad. Okay, so let us bring in our pack song pup. So the tenacious pup pumps it up. And we'll go attacking with everything, only because we get to draw a card off of that. Okay, Garrick's Uprising is actually pretty nice. We really need, though, that land drop. Where is that land drop at? At least with the land drop, we can draw some more cards. Hopefully. All right, there we go. There is our last forest. Uprising comes in, draws us a card. Very nice. All right, we got another land. Pack Song Pup also pumps itself up. And there you go. As you can see, we have Exaxes. So there we go. Utilizing Garrick's Uprising again to draw. Going big with the Werewolf Pack Leader and the Pack Song Pup. I know it wasn't too fancy, but there you go. There's a card draw. And oh, okay, we're not done with this match yet. <laughs> Sparky still trying to survive here. All right, that's fine. I guess we're gonna have to wait another turn. Okay. So in this case, what do we want to do? Because we're just gonna have to be super aggro now just to get through. Snow Covered Forest, Ranger class. Creates another wolf for us. We will then trigger it to level two. Pack song pup pumps itself up. Alright, and this is still lethal. No matter what Sparky did. Okay, wow. Sparky actually came prepared. <laughs> so we gained some life off of that, which is unfortunate. Sparky really does not want us to win this match. That's okay. Okay. Since we're basically close to ending this, I'm actually gonna do some stuff I normally don't do. As you see right there, we're just going to get rid of creatures. We're going to get them out of the way. Thankfully, since we have the Blizzard Brawl, we can get rid of the Typhoid Rat right now. It'll be indestructible, so we don't lose it from the Death Touch ability. We can then also trigger off Ranger Class to level 3, which doesn't really do anything now, because we're basically going to win. But you can see right here, we would have gotten a Pack Leader for the next turn. But there you go, guys. Going big getting creatures out of the way with our spells, and there you go. That is how you play with Mono Green Wolf Stompy, everyone. All right, everyone. If you've made it this far into the video, shout out to you right now for those of you that are watching. Thank you so much. You are my true fiery friends, and to reward you, you'll be able to see the secrets to upgrading this deck. Now, granted, yes, you could actually go into another color, and you could splash in for something else, but we'll discuss that in a little bit. I would rather, honestly, you want to stick with it being a mono green deck. Yes, you could go more of a stompy route, but that kind of invalidates the whole point of making it a wolf tribal stompy deck, which I honestly want to keep as the core of our upgrades. So as far as upgrades are concerned, you're going to be adding in another copy of Night Pack Ambusher. We're going to be getting rid of our weaker pups, and instead we'll be adding in Cemetery Prowler, which is going to be in main deck because it has Vigilance, and also it helps us exile cards from the graveyard, being able to then cast something for cheaper. Honestly, it doesn't really help us that much in this deck because of the way we get a lot of double green mana symbols, but it still doesn't hurt to have it. Not to mention, again, it's a really good body. We're going to add in a copy of Ronos the Indomitable, so this will actually replace one of the Garrick's Uprisings, because this will allow us to then give something else that we have, both Trample and an extra Pump. Not to mention, it can be repeatable if we really do need to utilize it. The other thing is, even though this is technically not a wolf or werewolf, having Death Touch and Indestructible on a body can help us prevent our opponent from trying to overrun us with bigger creatures than our own. We're going to add in another copy of Primal Adversary as well. We'll then go up to a four set of Ranger class, and we're going to be adding in two copies of Hardened Scales. Hardened Scales allows us to then double up our plus one, plus one counter triggers. So keep in mind that as you kind of notice with the 
base version of the deck, we get a lot of counters to actually add to many of our creatures. So it was seemed pretty natural for us to at least add in a couple copies of Hardened Scales. You could argue that you could go with four copies of this, but I honestly think you can get away with two, because again, we have a lot in the one drop slot and you wanna to try to at least get your creatures out on turn one by then saving up your other one drops to support. As far as the land base, nothing really changes. We're going to just take out one snow-covered forest and add in a lair of the Hydra. Again, the Hydra is not a wolf. However, it's a nice little backup plant in case of all of our wolves just keep getting blown up. As far as your sideboard is concerned, we do have a lot more changes here. We're going to have actually a fourth copy of Nightpack Ambusher in the sideboard if we need to pull it in. Two copies of Heroic Intervention to ensure that we can protect our whole board if we go wide. Avabrook Caretaker is going to be in here just to help us ensure that we can keep our creatures protected with Hexproof and also start pumping them with counters. This goes insane if you can have this go off with the hard scales on the field. But also another thing that we can also try to do is we can sideboard in one of either Vivian. 3-drop Vivian allows us to cast our creatures as though they have Flash, which is really nice. And then 4-drop Vivian just kind of helps us also distribute those counters, which also, again, synergizes with the hard scales. But also its minus 3 allows us to pseudo-remove certain creatures out of the match. Now, if you want to actually go into a second color, here's some of your options for that. Suspicious Stowaway is great if you want to splash into blue. And also blue will have open up the access to more counter spells. If you go into black, you'll have actually more hard wraths and more one-sided options for you in terms of spot removal. So then you can then use Sorrow of Realm Eater. And if you want to, you can also even use Garrett Cursed Huntsman. The wolves in his deck don't really provide much of a support or synergy for the actual mono green version, but it's actually just kind of a cool thing to have. Kessig Naturalist, Tovalar, and Arlen, along with Child of the Pack, this is mostly going to be where most players will typically go, is going to be splashing into red so you have access to the werewolves themselves. But again, that's more of a cliche. This is, again, if you want to be a little bit more practical. But for me personally, here's my spice if I have to recommend a second color. Go white. By going white, you get access to Tulsimir. And Tulsimir actually is a very underrated option for you. And here's why. As you can see right here, the creature itself also brings in its own wolf that's a green and white one. And also, whenever a wolf enters the battlefield under your control, you also gain three life, and that creature can fight up to one target creature you don't control. Now, granted, you probably don't always want your wolves to fight, but being able to gain three life off of every wolf that enters the battlefield when you play with Tulsimir is actually pretty impressive. That's actually a really sweet way of keeping you alive versus the aggro decks. But again, those are the options if you want to stick to the wolf core and you just want to splash it to another color. It really is up to you. One of the cool things at least I do like about this deck is, as you kind of see from here, you actually have a lot more options now that we have a lot more support for the tribe. And that is our mono green wolf stompy deck, everyone. So again, as always, if you are a fan of this, please make sure to leave a comment below and I would love to hear from you guys about what you would like to see next. I'm sorry again, as of the posting of this video, yes, Kamigawa Neon Dynasty is already out, but don't worry, I'm already working on new deck techs for that. I have some options besides the cliche ninjas that everyone's gonna do, but I do have some also fun options from other cards that I've seen in the deck. We're gonna be trying to see if we can make a all colorless creature deck, mostly again, an artifact vehicles, that will not use any rares or mythics. And I'm actually looking at seeing if we can try to revisit a deck that I kind of built, but I haven't finished yet because I was hoping to see if we could ever get support, which is Shrines. Shrines actually did get support, and I think we can actually make a really fun budget deck tech for that. But those are gonna be down the pipeline in the future in case if you guys are interested. But in the meantime, thanks again for watching everyone. Please make sure to give a like on the video and subscribe to the channel to see all the deck techs, booster pack openings, hot takes, and more. And just remember that no matter what you do play in the game of life, always be sure to burn bright. Later.